In 1995, an elite pair of fuck-ups met while being tried for crimes they most definitely committed. The men were promptly released for being white. One lost weight and now poses as a family man in Dallas, Texas. The other got worthless degrees in English and philosophy. He lives alone in Los Angeles, California. Now, at great risk to their freedom, the duo has weekly conversations about past transgressions, current status reports, and wondering... Are we dead yet? All right, are we dead yet? Episode 11, we talk about cripples and going to the Avengers 2 and tranquilizer guns and Luke's origami. <laughs> Craig's kids do the gayest stuff. Uh, business the ideas and just shit. Listen to it. Hello? Yo. So fucking weird. Can you hear me? Yeah, oh yeah, I can hear you fine. Oh. Yeah. You look like oh. shit. Uh -huh. I just put my glasses on, too. <laughs> the sunglass episode. Yeah. <laughs> sunglass episode. It is the sunglass oh. episode. We're wearing sunglasses. You're probably listening, so you can't see the sunglasses on sunglasses episode. You know what they say? Only two kinds of people wear sunglasses inside. I don't know. What kind of people? Blind people and assholes. <laughs> What's the hardest thing about eating vegetables? Uh, the, uh, the taste. The wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard that. I thought that was fucking hilarious. What's horrible? <laughs> the wheelchairs. Uh... But you, see, you know there's gonna you know there's gonna be hygiene issues. You know? There's no yeah, question. Well, they, those fucking cripples don't keep their goddamn shit clean. So uh, why would you so nasty. I heard someone say this once and I really do want the answer is how to fucking blind people wipe their ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember who said that, but it's a great question. <laughs> I'm sure it was some comic, but like I want to know the real answer. That is hilarious. <laughs> How do they? I don't know, man. They probably just carry wet naps around with them and just do five every time or something. Maybe that'll be in the next season of Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh. Speaking of hilarious, episode 11 of Are We Dead Yet? <laughs> All right, so check this out. All right. This morning I went to my grandmother's 83rd birthday, uh, like breakfast brunch deal. Okay. Yeah. That's the last time everybody can get together. And they have these chips that they put out before the meal. You know, it's one of those fancy kind of uh, whatever hipster places. So these chips, and they're supposed to be, he said, they're marinara flavored chips. All right? Now, it's not an Italian place, but he said they're marinara flavored chips. And I've got an uncle that's an asshole about everything. And he takes a bite of them, and he's like, they taste like pesto, and he throws the chip down. <laughs> okay. okay, so it tastes like pesto, fine. It tastes like pesto. I said, do you like pesto? And he goes, yeah. And I said, so if it was called a pesto chip, would you like it? He was like, yeah. And I'm like, so you don't like it because of the name? He's like, don't like it because of the name. <laughs> I'm like, you're such an asshole. <laughs> so had they just called it a pesto chip, he would have loved that shit. But because they called it a marinara chip, he didn't like it. He's out. <laughs> That's an asshole. <laughs> a funny one, though. I've seen him before tell the waitress before the meal even started, here's your tip. If you do a good job, all this will stay. And I've watched him take dollars off of it. And you're like, you're a fucking asshole. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I don't like to eat with them because I know they're going to fuck. If you've been there before, they're going to fuck with this food. <laughs> There's no chance they're not messing with this food. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Thule. I won't go to drive through with him. <laughs> because he's such a piece of shit in it uh, that... Uh, I know his food has ass on it. <laughs> like, there's been multiple times where we're there, and I'm like, never mind, I don't want anything anymore. 
um, your order was way too insane. <laughs> I went to see the Avengers again because it's been out for a few weeks. This fucking kid, this family, um, sits in front of me. And it's like four males and a, like a five-year-old, I'm guessing. I think younger than Walt, so let's go with five. Uh, and it's an 1120 show, which, why do you bring your kid there? There's no way it's not going to start screaming and being annoyed <laughs> at 1120. Like, there's no possible, unless you, I don't know what, I mean, they get grumpy, right? I get yeah. fucking grumpy. Right. Uh, and, <laughs> if I'm awake too fucking late. Uh, anywho, so right at the beginning, and it's the thing right before the movie goes, is someone doing like, your screen bright is annoying to people around you. So don't use your phone. Kid in front of me, like of the three, there's three men and then one of them's like young. I don't know what the relation, I'm sure they were like his uncles or something, <laughs> which just makes me angry because they should have stopped him because he started filming the movie what? and shit with his phone. Like, oh. and no, I know. I mean, I immediately before the opening credits or anything's been said, like lean forward. And I'm like, are you going to do that the whole movie? And he goes, <laughs> oh no, I totally wasn't. And turns off his phone. Yeah. that was, He just wanted to record the fucking credits. Right. <laughs> he loves to score. <laughs> so, of course, like an hour into it, the kid, maybe not even an hour into it, and it's like a three-hour movie. Um, but let's say, yeah, an hour at the most, the kid starts losing its shit, and the dad leaves with him. And, you know, and I know, it's right in front of me, and they fucking, you know, so I notice. He leaves, and then he comes back, like, 20 minutes later without the kid. <laughs> Put him in the car. <laughs> That's what I, he must have, and he would leave every, like, 30 or 40 minutes and go, and I guess check on his kid in the fucking car. That, I don't understand how that's okay. Like, I don't understand how you got the kid to the movie without going, wait a second. Kids usually <laughs> by now. Maybe something's going to go on, and I'm not going to get to enjoy the movie. Dude, that's how I, that's how I sneak in. I buy a Walt the ticket. Send him in. He goes to the exit, opens the door, and we all come in. Hell yeah. It's like we used to do it. <laughs> Hell yeah. You're training him good. I don't fucking know. That's why I hate the movie experience. It's people. It's I mean, there's, people. yeah, it's horrible, but I try to pick my times when I don't think anybody's going to be there. You know, because uh, some stuff's so much better on the big screen. You know, you can only see it that way the first time. Oh, yeah, but that's what's, what's also is funny about that. It's always movies that aren't the good ones. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, it's never, it's it's always the Avengers or something blowing up, The Hobbit. Um, right. Come here. Say hi. Hey. Hey, come over more in the middle, buddy, like in front of your dad. Oh, what do you got there? Origami. Origami? Oh, cool. My brother does a bunch of origami. Mm -hmm. Here's Yoda. Here's Darth Paper. And here's an Ewok from Star Wars. Darth Paper. I like it. Clever. That's a, that's a clever... That's a, I saw your uh, your Hornet costume. You look cool. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. Can't believe you made those yourself. And those are originals. Mm-hmm. I got them all three from um, two books. This one was from Jabba the Puppet. These two from for the surprise um um the um, um the Return of Dice Paper or something. Uh huh. That's cool. I like hey, them. What do you want? You cool? I'm thirsty. Okay, we'll go get something to drink. Doctor Dazzle. How about milk? No. Yeah. Dazzle. Yeah. Please. Not a chance. I'm trying to drink it now. I know. Well, you know, it's horrible. Maybe you could have nothing like a lot of kids all over the world. Big okay. Shut Dr. the door. Dazzle. Shut the door. Give me Dr. Dazzle. Okay, check this out. Shut the door. He's, he calls, he's calling it Dr. Dazzle, right? I think you can judge where somebody is on the economic scale by what kind of generic soda they drink. <laughs> because, like, if you've been like Dr. Pepper, you're like, they're doing pretty good. 
But it'd been like, can I have a Sam's Choice, like Dr. Patriot or whatever they have? And they're like, oh, shit, they're doing bad. They're doing bad. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking, because I was like, I get my shit at 99 cent store, and I ain't ever heard of Dr. Dazzle. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know. It's good, though. <laughs> it's like a super sweet Dr. Pepper. You almost have to cut it with, like, uh, salt. Club. Right, <laughs> uh, those were awful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's funny. I was. I love doing with the little kids when they're doing little gay shit like origami. Like my brother does Shut that, up. and he's a and he's a uh, <laughs> he's a green beret. So you'll see, you're not a little pussy like all the kids say. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> the uh, the day we're sitting there and Walt, you know, my other one, goes, uh, I'm going to rob a bank. And I was like, okay, why? Yeah, let's get the money. And he doesn't think about it's going to hurt anybody or he's stealing it. You know, he's, I asked him what, what made him think about it. And it was a Looney Tunes where they robbed the bank. So that's cool. But I was like, how would you do it? And he goes, well, I wouldn't go in there and show my gun. I would go in there and ask him to show me how everything worked. And once they let me back there, I would say, listen, I've got a gun and I don't want to hurt you, but you need to give me all the money right now. And I was like, what are you talking about? That's perfect. A little kid could totally do that. <laughs> I was like, but replace gun with grenade. <laughs> <You> got it. <laughs> they might think they can wrestle the gun away, but they're not going to. They're not going to chance a grenade. <laughs> okay, and this I, I was actually thinking about not so much for robbing banks, but more like uh, house invasions mm -hmm. and shit. Why don't people get tranquilizer guns? Like, there's no like you're not there to kill anybody. It's much small. I mean, and I'm not, I mean, maybe you don't even need to shoot him. You're going to tie him up. Like, don't even let him wake up. Right. Just shoot him with a trank. It can't be that hard to get a tranquilizer gun. <laughs> uh, like, what? I don't understand why that's not used more often. I feel like that would be so much fun. I'm sure it is hard to get a tranquilizer gun. I mean, like, well, that honestly, that's what's sad is as I thought about it, like, because I, I was thinking about this earlier today, and I was like, God, it's sad that it's probably easier to get a gun in America than oh, a tranquilizer sure. gun. For sure. Dude, uh -huh. when, we were, when we were coming up, it was easier to get a gun than beer sometimes before we figured out the racket. I mean, no <laughs> lie. It really was. Um, I mean, everybody had a, or had access to one, but they, uh, but the, uh, think about it, even in movies, like even like Jurassic Park, like they only had so many tranquilizer shots. <laughs> and that was like spare no expense. You know what I mean? So, I think tranquilizers are hard to get a hold of. I think the gun industry must uh, control the tranquilizer industry. Because I'm sure it's cheaper to make bullets. You can um, make one with a shotgun, you know? Wearing a trank. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, where do I get these fucking tranquilizers? I guess you just get a hypodermic, like a metal hypodermic, and put or make, you know what you get? You probably get one of those, like, turkey, uh, those things you inject in the meat. It's like, one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd probably do it. Or just a rock in a sock. Yeah, or just a, a D battery in a sock. <laughs> I don't want to spend any money. I'm, I'm just going to take my own sock off. <laughs> <laughs> and a rock, I'm always fine. <laughs> I saw a guy get whooped with a, a padlock inside a sock, and it was brutal. Yeah. And you don't really break that up. Because you don't want to get close to it. Yeah. You just wait for your arm to get tired, pretty much. Is that, is that why Amber didn't stop you? Right. Uh, from hitting Walt with the sock lock? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm scared to do anything over the top to that kid because he's going to come back tenfold on me. Hey, I'm like, about to tell something hilarious, listeners out there, but it's only going to be on the YouTube page because I'm going to do visual parts of it. So you should check out the YouTube page for extended <laughs> episodes with other stuff on it. Um, <laughs> all right, Craig. So what I think you should do with your kids, whenever it's crying in public, is grab it like this. Pick it up. So you're holding it by the waist and it's bent over. Oh, I'm crying. Oh. 
and just start humping the shit out of it. Just oh my God. the shit out of your crying kid. Like, smile. Oh, you're going to cry? I'll give you something to cry about. Oh, yeah. People won't That's know what, what to do. Because no. they'll say, they'll think like rape at first, obviously. But yeah, then no, they'll stop the raping them. Like, you're spanking them with your pelvis. Oh, my God. You're allowed to spank in public. I don't think that's going to hold up in court, sir. I <laughs> it should. Um, just go to court, say, are we dead yet? Made me do it. Um, <laughs> I want to see someone do that. Most of the things, the most of the reasons I would want kids is for stupid things to do with them. Just to <laughs> use them as like a prop. Um, I, I use them to steal all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. It's so much easier with a kid. They go grab oh. stuff and then they come and put it under one of your flaps. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listeners, y'all just missed something hilarious. Go to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. I've got an idea for a business. Okay. Okay. We start a company to where if you are pulled over, mm -hmm. you know it's for speeding. You text or do this app, and you say speeding on highway green at road marker, you know, blue. <laughs> so then they cut right when that happens. You're sitting there, and you're talking to the cop, and you know, you get a text back with what story it is, and you're like, it's like appendix. It's like, officer, my son's appendix ruptured. My wife's behind me with him. I'm trying to beat her to the hospital. So doing, and then a woman pulls up with a kid screaming in the car, and she's like, come on, honey, we gotta go. Why are you pulled over? And then the cop's gonna be like, go, and then you're gone, <laughs> right? And, you, and that service costs like thirty dollars instead of a two hundred dollar ticket. Or you can be like, if you get pulled over and you've got like weed in your car, you've been smoking and an old lady pulls up behind you and gets out and she's like, oh, oh, Spence officer, he lost his father today. And the cop's like, oh my God, go, just go. I'm sorry, just go. And that costs like $75 versus like jail time. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it's a really good idea. <laughs> what if you're a black guy though, getting choked to death? What does the person come up and say? I guess an ex like WWE wrestler and comes and frees you out, or a college wrestler maybe. Oh, okay. He moves on the car. A white guy shows up with a video camera, maybe. Um, a long hair, scruffy, like CNN credentials. So yeah. I like the idea. Problems with it is yeah. you're an idiot for having to put in this. We have this thing called GPS now, so it'd just be a single button you pick, push, and everything is taken care of. You got a cop walking up. You can't be fucking texting people. Listen, I'm a big picture guy. Okay, sure. Location services. I got it. Got it. Yeah. Figure that shit out, my friend. I like that. Another good one. I don't know if this is in Texas, but in LA, they have to post online. Um, and this probably exists because it's obvious. They have to post online where all the um, the fucking drunk stops. What are those called? Where they stop uh, looking for drinking DUI. Oh, a. Uh, what the fuck are those called? Roadblock. Yeah, ro anyway, yeah, yeah, whatever. Any any place, you know, the roadblocks where they're trying to catch fucking drunk drivers. DUI checkpoints. DUI checkpoints, yes. Yeah. They have to put that online. There should be a motherfucking app for that. App for that that <laughs> puts it up and then like you can do your routes around that. I mean, I've never been caught in one of those. Never even seen one in real life, but I guess there's a, I probably have and then I turned like a fucking normal person. Right. <laughs> Just park the car on the shoulder, get out, throw a match in it, and to walk the other way. <laughs> Back with your app. That's like the, to get the cops off of you. It's like when we were at uh, Home Depot. Huh. And, you know, were you there that fucking night when the gun got pulled on me? Mm -hmm. By the cops? Oh, you weren't fucking there that night? Oh, oh okay. Was that the white pants night? No. Yes. Okay. No, no, that was the white pants night when the yeah, cop pulled when you, the gun on that, me. Yeah, I don't remember him pulling the gun, though. Oh, okay, okay. So, you know, we're having the keg party. But I remember everybody scattered and then came back, and I didn't and ride. That, you know? I mean, those white pants were on me a lot. So we're having that uh, the field party, you know, we got kegs out in the field. Explain and, what the field party is, though. 
Because this was this is crazy. It sounds crazy. Talk about how we got in there and stuff. You go ahead. Like, like, we just okay. Well, there was explain Home Depot for us. Okay, there's a Home Depot at a major highway 75 called Central Expressway that runs through the center of Dallas, a major highway, and Forest Lane, which is like one of the oldest roads in Dallas. So this is a this is a major major intersection. You go to the Home Depot and you would cut left towards the back through a tree line and go to a giant field that you couldn't see from the road and we would have insane, everybody has their system out, multiple kegs, shots, everything you can imagine, parties down there all the time and never get in trouble. It was, it was like Neverland. <laughs> Wait, it wasn't like the cops didn't show up. Remember Spider and Smokey would oh, come yeah. and they would just count the number of cars that were in the field. And then say, you know, it, bring me that many sober people. That's right. And shit. No, this one night, though, <laughs> they came. And it was a, there was another, I can't remember if it was Spider or Smokey that was there. Let's say it was Spider. Um, and then some new rookie guy. And they didn't, they didn't fuck it. He didn't know us at all. <laughs> and so they get up. Right when they get there, of course, like half the people run to the woods. Um, to get away, but we're not running. Uh, it's 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 road road not empty yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're glad people are running. <laughs> so uh, the the, 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 the they you know they were trying to be cool, but the rookie like found some uh, weed on somebody. So they're like everybody's getting the MIPs, minor in possession, for the booze, not that person's weed. Yeah. Um. After they found the weed, they brought all the kids, you know, over by the cop cars. And he's like, everybody sit down. And everybody sits down, but I won't sit the fuck down. Because I got white Tommy Hilfiger's on. And I'm a classic <laughs> guy like that. I ain't getting mud on my fucking Hilfiger's. So he's like, sit the fuck down. Nope, not going to sit down. Not going to mess up my pants, officer. Pulls out a gun. <laughs> sit the fuck down. Craig, Brandon, all my good friends, like, stand up. And then somebody goes, I hope you have enough bullets. <laughs> and then the cop goes, everybody get in my piece. So everybody fucking lines up. We're drinking back at the keg while all the other kids actually like get tickets. Finally, gets towards the end. So now we got to go up. Motherfucking cops run out of tickets right, right. before us. So mm -hmm. we're not going to get in my piece. So he calls, <laughs> you know, to get more tickets to come in. But what he doesn't know is, um, let's say John Rodeo. It knows the secret to go call 911 so that the cops will get a call. And he called the, the fucking 911 and said the target down target. the street was being <laughs> robbed by an Asian lesbian gang. <laughs> Why he said that, I don't know. So the cops left. None of us got tickets. Everybody else had paid us to come there. My fault they even got tickets, probably. Ah, uh, they hated us. Fucking Depot. <laughs> He was in the woods when he made that call. No, no, no. He went. To, this was before everybody had cell phones. He went down to the payphone. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Nobody's making a fake nine one one call on a payphone or right. on their cell phone. But I remember he took off and went that way through all that shit. Yeah. And made the call. Thank God. Always a thinker. Huh? Always, always a thinker, man. I'm pretty sure we planned that out. I know. I'm just saying. Yeah. Those are great things. We were we <laughs> yeah. were very. We had a lot of good fucking party goddamn styles. The secret passage way out of Weir's house. Um, we had a good that shit. That was totally worth me and Brandon skipping school for a day. But I'll never forget being there and going through the hole in the fence and running through that field back there. And they had the helicopter out. Uh huh. The helicopter was shining down, and Jared's running, and he pulls his pants down. And he's hitting his ass. <laughs> I'm just thinking. <laughs> Here they are. They're used to working on Cliff where, like, this shit goes down in other parts of it. And they're seeing this fucking little drunk white boy <laughs> running through this park, flapping his ass. <laughs> like, they've seen gang shootings and all this shit all the time. And they see this fucking punk <laughs> running through a field after having a house party where there's just speakers and beer and weed. And that's it. And the whole house and girls. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they thought it was funny or they were like, God, if I could shoot anybody tonight, I'd be that kid. <laughs> you know? Oh, I'm sure they were like, oh, calling in, please, officer. Just let me wing him. Just let me wing him, please. It'll be so funny. Um, See, if we were up there, we'd have like, like slingshots or something that we wouldn't get in trouble for. We could really fuck stuff up. Like, whoosh, 
That would be awesome from a helicopter. We definitely <laughs> need to get a helicopter. Uh, we need to work on that. Figure out a way to get this thing to make us some money for a helicopter. Hey, so we should, you know any lawyers? Mm -hmm. Ask one of them what is the um, statute of limitations. Oh. Um, I'm assuming any, I mean, any, I, most of the, I mean, really all the bad shit we did, we were, was before we were 18 for the most part. Um, yeah, but don't try a 16 year old is 18 for sure. Especially like retroactively. Yeah. <laughs> the girl's really cool. Um, and that's why I got a, in her name. Yeah. The, the, the girl I texted you about to remember her name. And that, uh, which I do, I'm just not saying it right now. <laughs> um, so, uh, it's really funny, really cute. Like, I like this girl. I'm sure she doesn't care for me. But um, <laughs> that's just a given, pretty much. I probably didn't even need to mention that part. Uh, so, anyway, during, after it, uh, uh, first of all, we she made me get up and dance. Like, in between songs of karaoke. And I was <laughs> sore. I'm still a little sore, quite frankly. <laughs> that was Monday. It's what day today? Saturday. Uh, like I've been kind of a, well, partly because I tried to do the splits. If you're still sore, that means you pulled something. Yeah. You're not still sore. Whatever. Um, maybe it's because I got hit by a car. Maybe it's because. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so during this, I like offer. I'm like, hey, you, you know, if you get another drink, just put it on my tab. It's like, no, I'm a lightweight. I'm just having this one glass of wine. Cool. Night goes on. Now we're leaving. We're going to go to uh, another place. Um, and she goes, hey, you know how you wanted to buy me a drink earlier? Well, why don't you just pay for the one I did have? As if that's what it was. But it was so fucking genius. Girls should just take a tab. Be like, anytime yep. a guy wants to buy you a drink, be like, well, not right now. And then at the end of the night, like, hey, I had six ones. You offered me twice. Will you pick <laughs> two? And then, hey, hey, you, you offered to buy me a drink. You want one? Has bill split between all the guys. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but she totally said it like, I want to, I, w <laughs> I know you wanted to pay, buy me a drink earlier. So just pay, Cause as if that's the point of buying someone a drink. Uh, that is to trap them for five to seven minutes. We, yeah. And then I met back up with her at the, at another comedy place. It's really funny, and uh, nothing interesting happened there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, although she did keep telling me multiple times a night, "Don't drink and drive." Like she had been dr seeing me drink all fucking night long, as if that was going to be like, "Okay, and let's that's get the setup. time." That's the setup. She wanted to take you home, dog. That's how no, she was off to other stuff with a better looking guy. That'd be kind of fun to do here. Yeah. You know, if I knew any funny people here. I know. That's the problem. I don't, I don't know any funny people anywhere. Yeah, I know. I've never met anybody that I thought was funny. I haven't <laughs> laughed in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Did we talk about the diaper party yet? No, I guess not, because that just happened. The but, Dahmer uh, party? The diaper party I went to. Now you have the the reveal party where you find out if it's a boy or a girl, which is weird because they're like, come in here and see my kid's penis, which is really weird. Well, but they, the best part about that, because, yeah, you went over them all last week. Yeah. Um. Uh, and I was thinking about it later on. The reveal party, you just got to look at this because the... Does the dad know yet? Oh, yeah. So you get to see his reaction to what it is? Disappointment or happiness? <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> like, I, if I was there and it was like a picture there, I would never look at the picture. I'd just be looking at the dad. <laughs> <laughs> just locked in, zoomed in this far away. That's all I, that would be the only thing I'd look at at any of those, is just to see the dad's reaction. <laughs> just sweat on the brow. Because <laughs> I won't need to it. I'll know by his reaction. If he goes, yes, it's a boy. And if he goes, oh. 
<laughs> it's a girl. <laughs> Just like in China. Just like in China. <laughs> Speaking of a, co- uh, a business to start, you were talking about collecting those, uh, the slave babies um and how much you wanted the chinese babies uh, yeah, it's easy it is we just start a company that buys big nets and puts them at the end of the river <laughs> i thought we could just give out onesies to every family like two of them be like if you have a little girl put inside this pouch and pull this cord before you throw it in the river <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little inflatable baby raft <laughs> They like nutrients in it. <laughs> <laughs> nutrients. If you have a little girl, put her on the nutrient bed, spray it with water, pull the cord, throw her outside. <laughs> well, I mean, midgets are made by their parents not loving them, right? I think so. so. We can, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's why midgets exist, is because their parents don't love them. And so... <laughs> so, we... <laughs> We don't give them nutrients and stuff because you don't want big slaves. Like, there's not, like, hard work that needs to be done by slaves anymore. We have Mexicans for that. Uh, (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) All is going to have to be taken out. That's totally going to have to be taken out. Oh, it's so not getting taken out. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't taken out anything that has to do with racism. That's our target market, though. (laughs) Our target market is the hardworking Mexican. And you're offending them right now. (laughs) Oh, because Abraham Lincoln was gay as shit. Shut up. Oh, yeah. Uh, like he, Shut your mouth. I swear he was gay as fuck. Uh, <laughs> You're ridiculous. You're absolutely ridiculous right I'm now. Not, look up his letter. I mean, there's a bunch of more evidence, I'm sure. But the to me, all I need is the swift letter. It's letters to his guy friend, his, his little buddy. Um, and it's letters like, I can't wait till I can caress your thighs and rub your body again. Bite your mouth right now. All right. Swear on my balls. Maybe they ate a lot of chicken together. Maybe. Um, I, that's. I mean, that's why the log cabin Republicans are called the log cabin Republicans. I thought that they were just uh, really into log cabins. Uh, Lincoln logs. Yeah. Dude, those were the shit, man. Fuck Legos. Where's the Lincoln log movie? Right. That would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> That would be hilarious. <laughs> what would be the plot of a Lincoln Log movie? <laughs> uh, did you watch? Did you watch Game of Thrones though? Yeah, we talked about it too. Not already. Not this last week. Because I just watched it like last night. What was this last week? Where um, the little girls at the house of faces sweet. Oh, that's floor. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the... Tilda, Tilda Swinton talks about how she grew up ugly. Well, I mean, we know you grew up ugly. You're ugly as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no chance that you ever were not. You were ugly as a baby. You were ugly as a little kid. You're just ugly. But, you, I mean, obviously you own it, and you're an actress now, so be proud of yourself. But you as a person, man, you are ugly. And you always were. And it was not a shock. Like, when she was telling that story, I was like, oh, it was a pig party. <laughs> like, before she even got into it, I'm like, yeah, they were fucking with me. That's awesome. <laughs> Have you been watching any of the stuff? Like, there's just been a a lot lately about fucking trannies on, uh... Well, yeah, because of Jenner. Oh, yeah, well, he's really gotten it out, but it's been this last year. Like, there's there's this hot-ass chick model who's a guy, or... I know who you're talking about. Um, okay, he's not a guy. You and I I are cisgenders. Which means our, like, brain and our, what we look like, align. Okay. Um, and shit. But here, here's my question about the transgender community. What happens on a transgender cruise when the ship goes down? Like, who gets on the lifeboats first? (laughs) 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 I 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> that's that's so funny. That's really the only problem I see with it causing in the world. Um, if you have, you know, like back in the day on a pirate ship, like if a woman was on board, it was bad luck. But what if it was a transgender person? I don't know. Huh. See, if they had video cameras back then, we could answer that question. Damn it. Damn it. I think if you're a transgender person on a pirate ship, you're just getting raped constantly. <laughs> like, I, I'm pretty sure, like, if the ship goes down, you're going down with a dick in your ass. Absolutely. Uh. <laughs> but, I mean, is there a better way to go? You know, There's I mean, not. <laughs> not a better way to go. Uh, out at sea with a cock in your ass. I think it started like people kind of talking about it with Facebook when they added all those different gender things. You remember? Yeah. I mean, and it's a shit ton of them, right? Yeah, but before you could just do like undecided. Yeah, right? gender fluid, cisgender. Uh, I mean, there's a million of them. Here's the thing, though, is... Like, I get it. You want to identify yourself, whatever, um, and have a name for your thing. But the people that are going to, like, the, the the people that, you know, are jerks, you're, it doesn't matter what you call yourself. You're a faggot to them. And the people like us that don't give a shit, don't give a shit. Um, like, unless we get to have, like, a conversation about it, which apparently isn't okay. You know, right. be like, what's under there? Um... <laughs> Which, I don't care. I mean, really, it's just the pronoun. So I'll say he, and then you go, no, I prefer she, and now I'll call you she. That's the right. conversation. Yeah. Like, you're a faggot to those people, and to me, I don't care. And that's why I don't care. Just like I don't give a fuck where you stick your dick or your vagina. Um, doesn't matter. But if it's amazing, tell me about it. I saw the other day I was at a uh, at lunch. With my dad, actually, at a little Mexican food place over by the office. And a person walked in, and, you know, white, those white shorts, um, not tight, but just like, like not dressy, but nicer than like jean shorts. And uh, uh, aqua halter, no, I guess halter top is what you call it, sleeveless, not halter top, those are up the middle, but a sleeveless shirt, and had incredible legs. Incredible legs, okay, mm -hmm. but really short blonde hair. I mean, wearing, you know, heels, you know, three-inch heels or something. And uh, goes up and hugs the hostess and goes and sits down at the bar. I mean, I see, you know, my dad kind of looks over. I kind of look over. There's not a lot of people in there anyway. But I made the comment of nice legs, okay? Well, then I walk by and it's like, I love it's a cot day. I was like, oh, my God, it was totally a dude. Totally a dude. Like the face had woman's glasses on. Totally like no, no way a woman's voice sounded deeper than like Sigourney Weaver in Ghostbusters. <laughs> By Duel or whoever she is. Like it was bad. And uh, I went back and told my like dad. Like Kathleen Turner and Tilda Swinton's body. <laughs> I told my dad and he was like, what? <laughs> like it was like the most of me, like no way. No way. And I'm like, no, totally. Totally. Do. I, uh, I, I was at a Mariah's birthday one time and we were at some bar and I dropped something. So I go to, I, you know, pick it up at the bar and I see like these great legs and I'm like picking this up and I'm looking up and I see this great ass. <laughs> Stand up. Dude. Totally a dude. Like, not even, like it wasn't, he wasn't trying to be a girl. He was just, you know, gay dude in clothes. <laughs> and I had to like tap on the girl, and I'm like, dude, you have a great fucking ass. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. You have to admire it. I mean, you have to. Look it's fucking great. If I could have cut him in half and put Kathleen Turner's body on the top half, it'd have been awesome. His voice is too high, is what I mean. She had a great voice, though. Probably still does. What happened to her? She just disappeared, man. She's romancing the stone and Roger Rabbit, and she's gone. Yeah. Um, that's funny, because she, she, Val Kilmer now looks like her. <laughs> Have you seen him recently? I just happened to see a picture of him online today. He's fat. He looks like fucking 
uh, Mickey Rourke ate Kiefer Sutherland. Uh, <laughs> That's an aggressive combination right there. Yeah. I don't think they're even allowed to hang out with each other. <laughs> That's crazy. They have to see if either one of them is going to be at the award show, but why would either one of them be at the award show? <laughs> How was the play? Oh, it was great, man. He killed it. Yeah? He it. Yeah, he got more laughs than anybody. Yeah. He killed it. And some of the costumes were straight up crazy. Like crazy what these parents did to their kids. Did but it? we had the only costume with an actual stinger on it, so I was proud of that. I was, I was, that. I was pretty, I was impressed. And you even made it even sharper than it needed to be. I did, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, we could actually hurt somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah, no, I, 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 when I saw it, I mean, obviously a strap on would have been funnier. I mean, yeah, it totally would have been funnier. But he's at that age where he can wear a plunger on his ass and not get fucking jokes. So there's only a year or two left of that <laughs> <laughs> before there's no more wearing a plunger on your asshole to school. <laughs> he wouldn't even consider it. <laughs> when you're in eighth grade, that shit is not happening. <laughs> what what the fuck is Walt going to be like when he's at the angry age? Oh, dude, I don't know. It's going to be horrible. That's why I'm just trying to make him really love me now. Like, really, like, truly love me. Like, depend on me. Like, I'm the Lysine in Jurassic Park. Like, he needs me to stay alive every day. Like, that's what I'm trying to do. You're the Lysine in Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Like that, I have to be that important to him. Well, that's easy. Just make him a junkie and mm -hmm. be his dealer. That's funny. I've thought about that. If I didn't think he wouldn't leapfrog me and then find like the source that's importing it to like New York, you know what I mean? And then he's just, well, that would be dope if he was in the business though. If he could get him this young. Well, tell him it's something that like no one else can get. Like it's really just heroin, but be like, this is, <laughs> this is fucking a horse heroin. <laughs> They call it horse horse. Uh. <laughs> horse horse. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> but well, uh, I don't know what he's going to be like, man. I'm worried about it. Maybe not. I mean, he's, he's fiercely loyal. So I don't think he'll do anything to me, but I'm going to be doing a lot of explaining to other people. Yeah. Like, I know that. There's going to be a lot of that. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and let him get vasectomies when they turn 15. Yeah. So about that. Can you imagine? They should make a plan B for dudes, but I guess it's plan... Oh, no, they do. It just changes your blood type, though. <laughs> <laughs> because, like, my, if I had read a girl, like, every morning, like, I would switch her vitamins with plan B. That's but, cool. Like, maybe you could do that with boys, day. too. Uh, oh, fuck that. You ever watch 15 or 16 and Pregnant? Never. I watched a season of it. <laughs> First of all, the guys on it are so awful. Like It's like they don't know they're on television. <laughs> uh, I don't get it. The guys are the biggest worthless pieces of shit. But what I don't really understand is the parents. Because my daughter comes home pregnant. She's like, I want to keep it. Okay, go live on the fucking street then. Mm -hmm. uh, and keep your baby. Or I'll you know, lend you the money for an abortion. That's exactly, lend you, okay. exactly right. Really cool. Y'all go in there. Close the door. Okay. See, yeah, I mean, that just, how many people make it? And how many of those kids are normal? Like, sometimes there's that kid that's, like, street smart. Yeah. He grew up with his mom who was a kid, and they're really close and all that shit, but that's a one in a million scenario. Yeah. Most of the time, the kid's like, me and my mom smoke pot together. She's a stripper. And you're like, oh, cool. Okay, great. <laughs> well, I mean, I think the only one that, like, came out like a decent person out of that show is the Farrah Abraham girl who did the anal sex video. Like, that's oh, a daughter you can be proud of. <laughs> right. Um, she's providing for her child. Um, she's a real class act, to my point. World's oldest profession. I mean... She is if the person want, that made me want to purchase a sex swing. I had never you, thought about that before until I saw that one. I was like, that does look like a good fucking thing. If you want job security, go with the world's oldest job. I mean, there's no question about that. Yeah. It's, <laughs> a sex swing. I don't know. Maybe. I just always go to playgrounds. 
Well, so maybe questions. for bigger guys. There's just positions I can't get into um, <laughs> without a sex swing. Like, I'm not going to be supermaning anybody anytime soon. No. No um, way. Yeah. No. Not again. Yeah. There was a guy we picked up in, when I was an EMT that that's totally how he hurt himself. But they were so embarrassed. Like, we kept, like, having to ask, like, what medications have you taken? Finally, he's like, okay, I took some Viagra earlier. Um, and, and we were like, yeah, 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 you threw your back out, begging to your wife. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> oh, fuck it. A stupid DMT. That's a hard thing to say too. Cause they're like, why aren't you an EMT anymore? I'm like, cause of a head injury. <laughs> and that sounds like, what, you hurt somebody? And I'm like, no, they found <laughs> out uh, about old head injuries. Of course, the way they found out is I told them, because I grew up being told honesty is how you're supposed to do things. Mm -hmm. And so I did that at the DMV, and then everyone's like, why didn't you lie? I'm like, because it asked me a question, so I put the answer. Admit nothing, deny everything, demand to see proof. That's all you can do. Uh, do that Around here, it's so bad. Some of them will have a line for like citizens, and then a line for non citizens. In the citizen line, you fly through it. Because, I mean, it's just like 16 year olds and people getting their licenses renewed. Mm -hmm. The non citizen line is like wrapped around three times. There's people outside, the guys there with the popsicle cart. They're making churros. There's, I mean, it's just like crazy ass. Do they there. have the corn guy? No, I wish they did, man. I'd be there all the time. Like, I know. Basically, the corn guy used to come down oh. my alley all the time, oh. not at this place. Yeah. Yeah. I like I like buying uh, things out of dirty carts. Oh, street food's great most of the time. Oh. You remember the taco guy on Greenville that we used to go to down there? Like he had the taco cart down there by the McDonald's where Greenville hit uh, Ross or whatever it is. Like past the old crow. I want to say I do, but I'm not sure. I know we've been there before because he had goat and shit. And it was crazy. Well, he owns a taco fucking drive through there now. He yeah. never moved off that corner. He just fucking bought the place and built it. He didn't have to be outside anymore. It's <laughs> the same exact shit. No, so it's funny. But he does good. Like, I went by there the other day and I was like, hey. You know, and he was like, okay. And I was like, oh, still the same old guy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. This guy hit my truck. I was at the pizza place down there after everything closed. And I'm getting out, and this dude hits my truck. And I don't even feel it, but I hear it. And I'm like, oh, shit, man. It's like 2.30 in the morning. And I go back there. This guy's getting out, and he's backpedaling already. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because I had my fucking knife in my teeth. I had both my fists up like this. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I go back there, and I look at my truck, and there's still dirt everywhere. Like, he didn't even make it to the bumper. <laughs> and then I his, I've got a ball back there. It's like the toe hitch and then two balls to the side. So it's like a triangle of giant steel balls. And it just completely fucked the front of his Honda. Like it the H out. It had big holes. The hood had a hole in it. Like, are you okay? And I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry that you did that to your car. <laughs> and he looked at it and sat in his car for like 10 minutes and drove off and didn't even get pizza. <laughs> and that was literally the only reason to be within two miles of where we were. <laughs> was that one place so he drove like a couple of minutes to get there wherever he came from <laughs> and passed nothing and he went home and all he passed was police on the way home i promise <laughs> so funny. back with my jeep um oh. remember the jeep had the 10 inch lift 33 by 12 50 tires looked like a fucking tonka toy we were at Felt a, like a tonka toy the one the one time i ever had the roof of it on it was uh, me and Brandon and Jarrett over that uh, McDonald's using the payphone. And then we get in and I fucking throw this shit in reverse and floor it right into like a brand new F-150. <sighs> and that fucking, that, that goddamn Jeep had basically the front of a train, you know, cow catcher on the back. It that really skull did. steel thing. I mean, this guy's fucking hood was pushed back over the engine and shit. Uh, it was so fucked up. And I'm, of course, we're drunk. And I'm getting out. I'm just like, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Brandon is giving the guy my information. 
and shit, and they're talking, and at the last second, for some reason, I decided, this guy stole this fucking truck. And I give Brandon, like, a look, and he gives him, like, you know, the wrong address. Like, it switches the, the address on it. But, I mean, the guy's got my license plate and shit. There's no reason to fucking yeah. not get caught. Never heard from him. That's crazy. Uh, it was totally stolen. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I was on Lemon one time. You know, we used to be able to go to that liquor store over there, Sigils or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went in and bought some Bacardi Limon because they basically sponsored us. Yeah. Like, we drank that. I mean, we drank that forever. I haven't had it in so long. I'm sure it's still good. But I, uh, do you remember drinking that and then taking it into the dollar theater and we would take the tonic water in mm-hmm. and make our drinks? So whenever we finished something, we would roll the bottle to the front. You'd hear, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I hated that we did that. <laughs> I fucking hated it. And the worst was Travis. Because uh, he throws always, last ones down there. Always at any time, the horse was Travis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so I've got that in the car. I've got like a handle of that, and I'm sure some Twaka or some St. Ives Special Brews. I had a lot. I had bought for a lot of people. Yeah. And I'm driving my dad's Suburban, and this guy in front of me hits his brakes in a Cadillac, and I just fucking slam it. And uh, I don't even get out. Like, I'm like, well, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> like, I'm done. So I'm sitting there, and the guy starts to get out of the car. And no shit, he's got a broken arm that's out like this. He's on a crutch. One of his legs is in a boot. The other leg's in a cast. Like, I don't even know how he's fucking driving. <laughs> Gets out, and he hobbles and scrapes back there. Looks up at me. I'm sitting in the car just, like, defeated. And he goes... Fuck it. He gets back in his car and drives off. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I believe in God. <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Like, I don't know how bad it was. I didn't get out to look, but it moved him when he was stopped. He had his foot on the brake and I moved him forward. Yeah. So. <laughs> it was bad. Uh, all right, dude. I got to get ready for work, man. All right, brother. Uh, I will. Uh, I'll holler at you later. Um, yeah. All right. End of episode eleven. Are we dead yet? Episode eleven. Follow us on that stuff. All of it. Yeah. Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Vine, SoundCloud. Yeah. <laughs> Follow us on it, and eventually we'll do something on it. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Later, brother. Later. It's so like not the stuff people would be like, yeah, don't say that. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that stuff, that stuff I like. Here's another reason you, know, you people should watch the YouTube page. You can see Craig's reaction to Tar Baby. Um, um, it's fucking awesome. I'll cut that part that. out just for you. You yeah, can't say that. I, I, know, I know how much, how uncomfortable Tar Baby makes you. <sighs> if that's not even one. Like a lot of other ones, you'd be like, that's a pejorative right off the bat. But like that one. I wouldn't know what I would. I wouldn't know you were being racist. I, that's something oh, I would be like, "Oh, that's racist." I don't know how. That well, I mean, as so, a kid, that is so offensive to Paleolithic men and women that I just cannot believe it. <laughs> that they had to live with those tar pits every day. I <laughs> think it's horrible. <laughs> they did take a lot of lives, so. Uh, <laughs> Some names, dates, and locations have been changed to protect the guilty. Only Craig and Spence should be judged by the content. Yeah, and, and find us on, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Vine, what else? Instagram, all of it. I don't know, you're in charge of that shit. <laughs>